Hey YouTube, so it's Shane here. So this video is getting started with the Raspberry Pi. In this video, I'm gonna show you what you need to get and uh, how you need to put it together to start doing automation with the Raspberry Pi. So as you can see on the screen here, we have a Raspberry Pi, we have a case for the Raspberry Pi, a power supply for the Raspberry Pi, um, some blue 3.3 volt LEDs, um, a ribbon cable, some buttons, a breakout for the um, GPIO, there's a breadboard, some jumpers so we can build some circuits on the, Jeep, on the breadboard, and uh, a memory card adapter, and a memory card, um, which is it's a class 10 memory card. I would recommend an 8 gig. I actually have a 4 gig here, and that'll work just fine, but uh, you need about 4 gigs or bigger. So let's move over to the computer where I'm going to show you how to install the software for the Raspberry Pi. Okay guys, now that we're on the computer, what I've done is I've put the SD card in the card reader on my Mac, and uh, now we're at Google, and we're just going to type in Raspbian, which is like that. Let's just go to Raspbian, and then click on the second link here, which is Downloads Raspberry Pi, and then you just scroll down to where it says Raspbian. Um, but just note, here it says Image Installation Guides. If you ever get stuck or whatever, just click on that link, and they'll, they'll help you step through, because I'm only going to do the Mac. If you're going to do Windows or Linux, there's guidelines in there on how to do it. So we're going to just click the Download Zip, and it's going to start downloading on the Raspbian. Okay, so now while that's downloading, let's go look at Terminal. So on a Mac, you push the Command and Spacebar key together, and you can get up uh, Spotlight. And then you just type in, uh, sorry, Terminal. And it will come up, and you hit Enter, and it will open up. Okay, and so what you need to do is you want to type in this command called Disk Utilities List. Uh, well, disk, uh, I'll, put this, I'll put the description, um, I'll put this command in the description. So you're going to hit Enter, and it's going to list all the devices that are currently... Um, connected and you can see here under disk 2 you can see my 4 gig um, memory card so we know it's going to be disk 2 so once it's done downloading what you're going to do is you're going to just double click on it and it's going to start extracting let me just skip through and while the, until this is done and extract okay guys so now that that file has been extracted um, let's just go over here and click on image installation guides because they've got a whole bunch of commands that we're going to need to run. So click on Mac OS, and we're going to go down here, and this is the command that we're going to do, going to use. So we're just going to copy this. Okay, copy. And so um, I extracted it to my desktop. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to type in the word CD desktop, and I'm going to hit Enter. And now it's going to be on my desktop. And I'm going to hit LS, hit Enter, and it's going to list everything that's on my desktop. And so as you can see, here is the image. This one right here, 2014 Wheezy Raspbian image. So what we're going to do is we're going to then uh, type in another command, which is it's called disk util list. Hit enter. And that's going to show us um, that our device is disk2. So now when we paste in the command, there we go. We know that our disk is disk2, so I'm going to just put in disk2. Let me just make this bigger so you can see. There we go. There's the command, disk2. And we know our image, if we scroll up, is over here called 2014 Wheezy Raspbian Image. So I'm just going to copy that. Let's just copy that. Okay, we're going to go down here, and let's just navigate over to where it says image. I'm just going to backspace that out. There we go, and we're going to paste. There we go. And I'm going to hit enter. And then it's going to ask for my password. So I'm just typing my password and hit enter. And it says resource busy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the space bar. Uh, I mean, we're going to hit command and space bar and bring up the Spotify. I mean, the spotlight, sorry. And then we're going to type in um, disk utility, which is right there. Hit enter. Bring it up. Gonna wait for it. Okay, and then we're going to click on ours, and we're going to click on the no name, and we're going to click unmount. There we go. Once it, so now it says unmount. So now if we run that command again, which I've just used, hit the up, arrow, the up arrow, and you'll get the command. Hit enter, and there we go. So it will just do this, which means it's actually going to be running. So I'm just going to, this gonna this takes generally quite a while, like up to 30 minutes, um, even an hour, depending on your computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stop uh, recording and I'll start up once it's done. Okay guys, so this is uh, what it looks like when it's done. 
And uh, basically all you need to do is just click back on disk utility, click over here and uh, tell it to eject. And uh, once it completes that, you can move over to the Raspberry Pi. So let's, let's move over to the Raspberry Pi. Okay guys, so here is the uh, Raspberry Pi. Here is the uh, memory card. Let's just take the adapter out. So we've got the memory card. Um, and basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slot it in. There's a little slot at the back, uh, which is where the memory card goes in. So let's just put that in there. Okay, so the memory card is in there. Um, then we're gonna connect the HDMI cable to the HDMI port, which is right there. Um, we're then gonna connect the ethernet jack. So let's just connect the ethernet jack into the ethernet port, which is right over there. There we go. And uh, lastly, you just connect the power. And you should see right over there where my finger is, you should see it. it's got a little red light right over there where my thumb is. And uh, that basically means that it's powering up. And you should be able to see once it's powered up. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So uh, let's go over to the screen and you can watch it power up. Okay, guys, this is what you'll see when the uh, Raspberry Pi boots up for the first time. It's basically just going to go through a whole bunch of uh, checks and it's just going to start booting things up. Uh, what you need to pay attention to is, uh, I'll, I'll highlight it on the screen, but you'll see it's going to tell you what the IP address is. So let's just wait for it to get there. And there we go, it says the IP address is 10.0.0.100. Um, you have to be pretty quick. If you have a keyboard connected, you can just click on finished and it will take you back there and you can see the IP address. Um, but I don't have a keyboard connected because this is going to be an automation controller and I don't have a system for it. So I just uh, quickly looked at the IP address as I was going by. You can just keep on resetting your machine until you can see the IP address. Like, um, yeah, so if you like miss it the first time, just, just unplug the power, plug the power back in and it will go there again. So let's go back to the Mac and uh, I'll show you what you need to do. Okay guys, so we're back on the Mac and uh, you're just gonna hit Command Space. You're gonna bring up the terminal by typing in Terminal, hit Enter, and there's your terminal. Then you're gonna type in SSH and you're gonna type in 10.0.0.101 because that's the IP address that I saw on the screen. You're then gonna say uh, dash L and you're gonna type in PI which is the user account you're gonna be using. And it's going to request for the password. The password is Raspberry. So you're just going to type that in. That's R A S P B E R R Y. Hit enter. And there we go. It's going to, you're going to be logged in. What then I do, what you're then going to do is just going to click on the sudo uh, rusb config and uh, basically just copy that and paste it right there and hit enter which now what you're going to do is you're going to see what's on your screen. And uh, what you want to do is uh, basically exp expand the, uh, the file system. So you can hit enter and it's going to, it's going to go through this whole process. It's going to say uh, partition has been resized. The file system will be enlarged upon next reboot. You're going to say, okay. Then what you're going to want to do is go down to change user password. And uh, it's going to be okay. So you hit enter and uh, now you put in your new password, make it whatever you're going to be. I'm not going to tell you what mine is, but uh, it's gonna be something. So I'm just gonna type my password in, and then uh, we're gonna type it in again. It's just like confirming. And there we go, it says password changed successfully. And then you can hit okay. And um, that's basically it. You can, there's a whole bunch of like things you can overclock and you can change some settings, whatever, but we're not gonna do any of that today. And it's gonna, when you say finish, it's gonna ask, would you like to reboot now? And you're gonna say yes. And then it will come up there with a message, a broadcast message saying that it is rebooting. And if you look on your screen, you'll see that it's rebooting. So let's just skip to when it's back online. Okay, so when the Raspberry Pi boots up, uh, you'll, it'll get to this point, and this is on the monitor. And uh, as you can see there, it has a Raspberry Pi login. And uh, if you look just above that, you'll see my IP address is. So the first time it'll give you that screen that blue screen, which is the configuring screen, but the second time it, it boots up, well, actually, once you run that screen, um, it will give you this, which is much more useful, so you know what the IP address is every time you connect to it. Okay, so let's jump back to the Mac. So on the Mac, you basically just hit the up arrow, 
And uh, when you do that, it's going to come up with the SSH already filled in for you. Hit enter and boom, it's going to now ask you for the password, which is the password that you just recreated. So I'm going to just type my password in. There we go. And uh, now we're logged in. We're successfully logged in. Okay, so this is the screen you get once you've successfully logged in. And uh, Rosby in the operating system we've just installed um, already includes the latest version of Python and the GPIO library. But uh, what we do need to do is just update it to make sure. So we're going to type in sudo apt-get and an update. And I'm just going to type that in and hit enter. And now it's basically just going to go through and it's going to just check to make sure that everything on the Raspberry Pi is up to date. So I'm going to jump back once this is done. Okay, guys. So um, this is what it looks like um, once it's update once it's finished updating. Um, never mind that nano test. I was just testing something earlier. So basically, what we're going to do now is you're going to type in nano test, which is n a n o space test dot p y. And basically, what that does is it's creating a Python script. So I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to open up nano. There we go. And now uh, we're going to go to the web browser. We should get Google. There you go. Okay. And uh, here we're going to just type in, we're going to type in Python GPIO. Okay. And then it's going to be the first one here, which is the uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO uh, version 0 0.59. I think it, it hasn't changed in quite a while. So let's just click on that. And then over here under uh, for examples and documentation, we're just going to click on that link. And then on that, we're going to click on examples. And wait for it to load. Sorry about that. My internet's not the greatest. And then we're going to click here on output. And it's now going to take us to the examples of output. And basically what we do is we're going to just copy this import, um, which is basically importing the library into our Python script. Whoops. So over here, we're just going to click paste. And there we go. And then I want to use something, the delay function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm also going to say from time import sleep. That's one thing we're going to do. Okay. And now we're going to go back here. And uh, this GPIO set mode, we that's basically what this function is, is how to uh, how the labeling structure is going to work. And uh, they've got a defaultly GPIO board, which I don't actually like. So I'm going to go and change that to uh, BCM. And what that basically means is it's going to be the exact uh, same number as the number on the breakout. We're going to go back here. We're going to then say we're going to use number 12 and the output. So let's just copy that. And uh, we can go back here and paste it. Hit enter again. Let's just make a new line. And then we're going to want to, we want to put it in a function, right? So here we're going to probably go, um, we're going to say while... Oops, let's just while, while um, I think we actually have to put a, some, we're going to put like a reason and then that. So here we're just going to type in true. Well, actually, yeah, let's type in true, true. Sorry about that. Hit enter. And then we got, if you got to, because it's Python, you got to push tab. And then we're going to copy this here where it turns the GPIO on. So we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it. And then we're going to go here, going to click and we click, and we're going to type in the word sleep. And inside here, we're going to say one second, and we hit enter, tab again. And uh, here we're going to just copy this one that says GPIO, turn it off, basically equal, well, the zero. We hit enter again, space, and type in sleep. There we go. And uh, one again, and that's it. And then we're going to hit control zero, I mean control O, sorry, not zero, control O, and then you're going to hit enter. And when he does that, when you do that, it's, it's basically going to say wrote 12 lines, which means it's writ written that file. So then you're going to push control and X, which is going to enclose it. Okay, and so now I'm going to jump back to the camera of the Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to just show you how to build a circuit. And then we're going to come back here, and I'm going to show you how to run your program, and that's just going to blink the LED. So let's jump over there. Okay, guys, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, put the breadboard on the table. And as you can see, I've got the ribbon cable 
attach to the breakout and I've got one LED there and I've got two jumper cables here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just plug in the uh, GPIO um, to the to the bread out the, to the breadboard. So as you can see here, yeah, there's a little notch that must always face towards the processor of the Raspberry Pi. So the little black square must have this little notch facing to it. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just test that LED and. Um, as you can kind of see, well, you won't be able to see because the ribbon cable is in the way, but uh, let's just move that out the way. Okay, so on the top here, it will say 3.3 um, volts. I'm hoping you can see this. Yeah, you can. 3.3 volts over there, and it's going to say ground over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, brown one from the ground. And I'm going to take the red one from the 3.3. And uh, we're basically just going to connect it to the LED to see the polarity of the LED. And then when you get the LED, uh, so I just basically connected it. It didn't, the LED didn't light up, so I just swapped it around, and uh, now the LED lights up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the red one out, and I'm going to put it on the one that's labeled number 12, since that's the one we used in the software. And as you can see, nothing happens. So let's go back to the Mac. Okay, so now I've brought the Mac into the, the shot. Okay, so now we're on the Mac. So on the Mac, if you type in uh, Python space test dot py and you hit enter, it will launch your program. And uh, now it's just given us an error to say we didn't have access. So that means basically that we got to go back and we got to put SUDO before, which gives us uh, basically like a higher level, gives us administrator access or root access, which is like the highest level. So we need to do that. Okay, now when you hit enter, it's probably going to prompt me for the password. Nope. And uh, let's go to the video and you can see the LEDs flashing. So there we go, the little blue LEDs flashing. And that's basically how to simply make a little LED. So in the next coming videos, I'm going to show you how to add buttons and how to actually start programming the Raspberry Pi into a full automation system. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, please thumbs it down. And if you have any like comments or like, hey Shane, you could, can you try and do this because it might be better? Please let me know. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a fantastic day and uh, keep on creating.